from backyard gardens to large-scale farms, fruit flies are one of the most menacing agricultural pests. Hawaii's invasive fruit flies are known to attack over 400 different host plants, including locally grown fruits and vegetables. Fruit fly infestation causes fruits and vegetables to rot so that gardeners cannot enjoy their homegrown produce and farmers are forced to discard much of their crop. These pests cause significant economic losses that greatly affect the profitability and sustainability of many tropical fruit and vegetable crop production statewide. Tropical fruits and vegetables with fruit fly damage do not meet state and federal requirements for export to the continental United States and international markets. Fruit flies are a significant impediment to maintaining and advancing the economic viability of Hawaii's diversified agricultural sector. The area-wide fruit fly demonstration project has shown that fruit fly suppression can be achieved. Research has led to the discovery of new fruit fly control techniques for Hawaii's farmers and backyard gardeners. Environmentally acceptable and cost-effective fruit fly suppression programs have been developed. Growers statewide have adopted these control techniques and are now winning their battles against fruit flies. To identify the fruit fly species damaging your produce, you must check its wings and abdomen for distinctive markings. Fruit fly behavior varies among the species, so suppression tactics which have been developed are different for each of the fly species. Correct fruit fly identification is essential to the selection of the proper suppression tactic to ensure effective fruit fly control. The four economically important fruit fly species in the state of Hawaii are the oriental fruit fly, melon fly, Mediterranean fruit fly, and the Malaysian fruit fly. Oriental fruit fly and Mediterranean fruit fly are fruit pests and infest almost every tropical fruit. The oriental fruit fly is found primarily at low elevations, while the Mediterranean fruit flies are found at higher elevations. Melon flies are primarily a pest of vegetable and melons. Malaysian fruit flies are a pest of peppers and are the least common of the four fruit flies. After identifying the fruit fly species present, growers can select the suppression method which works best for that species. The oriental fruit fly, melon fly, Mediterranean fruit fly, and Malaysian fruit fly follow the same basic life cycle of egg, to larva, to pupa, and finally to adult fly. In her lifetime, one female fruit fly can lay hundreds of eggs. Adult female fruit flies lay eggs inside young fruit, flowers, and stems. Once the eggs hatch, fruit fly larvae, or maggots, feed and tunnel through the produce, causing the produce to rot prematurely. Mature larvae either pupate inside the fruit or in the soil from which adult flies emerge. Fruit flies have a lifespan of one to four months or more. Because adult females are mature and can lay eggs within two to four weeks, fruit fly populations can explode within a very short time. Male and female fruit flies are easy to differentiate. Female fruit flies are identified by the presence of a prominent ovipositor to lay her eggs. The fruit fly suppression practices outlined in this video were developed by a collaborative partnership between the USDA Agriculture Research Service, UH College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, and the Hawaii State Department of Agriculture. Suppression techniques were researched implemented and evaluated on commercial farms and backyard gardens throughout the state of Hawaii. 
Participating growers who practice fruit fly suppression in accordance with the program reported a significant reduction in fruit fly populations and increased marketable crop yields. They found that fruit fly suppression can be as easy as one, two, and three. One, enhanced field sanitation. Two, weekly protein bait sprays. And three, trapping of flies. Because each of the four species have different host preference and exhibit distinctive behavior, suppression practices are different for each species of fly. Widely distributed, the oriental fruit fly is a major pest of almost every economically important fruit in the Hawaiian Islands. It is most abundant in lowland areas, but can be found at elevations up to 4,000 feet. Oriental fruit flies can be identified by their clear wings and black T-shaped marking on top of their abdomen. Major host crops include breadfruit, carambola or star fruit, cherry moya, citrus, guava, mango, papaya, and peach. Oriental fruit fly suppression is as easy as one, two, and three. Sanitation, protein bait sprays, and trapping. The first step, sanitation, helps to stop the fruit fly life cycle. When growers do pick up fallen fruit, fruit fly larvae do not have the opportunity to develop and mature. Growers should also destroy wild host crops such as uncultivated guava and mango. These crops serve as reservoir hosts for the oriental fruit fly, allowing them to maintain their population outside the planting area. Discarded crop fruit should be promptly removed to stop the fruit fly life cycle. Bagging fruit in thick plastic bags or feeding unwanted fruit to animals are good ways of practicing proper field sanitation. The second step in oriental fruit fly suppression is using a protein bait application. Protein baits attract and poison feeding male and female fruit flies. Protein bait sprays are intended for female fruit fly control. Once properly prepared, they are easy to spray and should be first applied after the flowering stage and every seven days thereafter until harvest is completed. Protein bait applications are most effective when sprays target the underside of fruit tree leaves or on tree trunks. Two to three spot sprays per tree is sufficient. Protein baits should be reapplied after rain. The third and most critical step in oriental fruit fly control is trapping. Traps for the oriental fruit fly contain the male lure, methyl eugenol. Trapping is intended for male fruit fly control. Three to five oriental fruit fly traps are required per acre of fruit trees, or one to three traps per backyard. Traps should be placed high in semi-shaded areas of host fruit trees and lures replaced every three to four months. The three oriental fruit fly suppression tactics, sanitation, protein bait applications, and trapping are most effective when practiced together. Controlling oriental fruit fly can be as easy as one, two, and three. Preparation guidelines for protein bait sprays and construction of oriental fruit fly traps are found later in this video. More information is available on our website at www.fruitfly.hawaii.edu. Melon fly is a major pest of Hawaii's vegetable growers. These flies are common from sea level to 1,500 foot elevations and their abundance declines with increasing rainfall and elevation. Melon flies are easy to differentiate from other fruit flies. The melon fly has a large black spot on each wingtip and a black cross streak on each wing. Melon fly infests cucurbits such as melon, squash, bitter melon, gourd, 
and pumpkin as well as solanaceous vegetables like eggplant, tomato, and pepper. Melon flies spend much time on favored wild hosts and certain crop plants in and around the fields. These plants are called roosting hosts. Wild cucurbits such as wild bitter melon, spiny cucumber, and ivy gourd in areas around fields serve as a reservoir for melon fly populations. Melon flies can be easily controlled using the 1-2-3 method. 1. Sanitation, 2. Protein bait applications, and 3. Trapping. The first step in melon fly control, sanitation, is very important because of the quick turnaround in cucurbit production. After the final crop harvest, fields should be plowed immediately to stop the fruit fly life cycle. Culls should be bagged in thick plastic bags or fed to animals. Removing wild melon fly hosts such as wild bitter melon, spiny cucumber, ivy gourd, and other uncultivated cucurbits can greatly reduce melon fly breeding. The second and most important step in melon fly control is protein bait application. Protein baits attract and poison feeding fruit flies and are intended for female fruit fly control. The prepared protein bait intended for melon fly control is sprayed in roosting hosts of bordering areas. Preferred roosting hosts include cassava, castor bean, Christmas berry, corn, hibiscus, panax, sudex, tea, and willy willy. Melon flies are known to roost in uncultivated fruit trees. These trees should also be sprayed with protein bait. Growers will find it beneficial to plant a border of roosting hosts so that they have plants in which to apply the protein bait. Protein bait applications should begin just as the vegetables or melons are forming after the crop's flowering stage. Sprays are most effective when applied at the underside of roosting host leaves. Two to three spot sprays per roosting host or two to three sprays per 10 feet of roosting border is recommended. After heavy rains, protein baits should be reapplied. Protein bait should be sprayed weekly until the end of harvest. Growers who replant their crops immediately should continue spray applications for six to eight weeks after the last harvest if they do not turn under their field. Because protein baits kill female fruit flies, it is an essential part of melon fly suppression. Field surveys have shown that when growers fall behind in their protein bait spray program, fruit fly populations quickly increase. Trapping is the third and last step in melon fly control. Traps for melon fly contain a male lure called Q lure. Place two to three traps per acre of farmland or one to three traps per backyard for melon fly control. Melon fly traps should be placed at eye level in the semi-shaded areas of roosting hosts. Replace the Q-Lure attractants at least every six months. Melon fly suppression can be achieved using sanitation, protein bait application, and trapping. Many Hawaii growers have reduced crop losses from melon fly by utilizing these three simple tactics. Preparation guidelines for protein bait sprays and construction of melon fly traps are found later in this video. More information is available on our website at www.fruitfly.hawaii.edu. Mediterranean fruit fly also known as medfly, is found in patches near leeward dry areas at all elevations, but are most prevalent at elevations of 1,000 to 4,000 feet. Medflies are easy to distinguish from other fruit flies. Mediterranean fruit flies have mottled pitcher wings with a brownish yellow band across the middle. Mediterranean fruit flies are known to infest a wide variety of fruits, 
This fly is a major pest for crops such as coffee, citrus, loquat, persimmon, guava, papaya, and peach. Mediterranean fruit flies are a real menace to farmers and backyard growers, but they can be controlled in the same three-step program. One, sanitation. Two, protein bait application. And three, trapping. The first step, sanitation, involves practices such as bagging infested fruit in thick plastic bags or using culls as animal feed to minimize fruit fly populations. Proper sanitation also includes the removal of wild medfly hosts, such as uncultivated coffee, peaches, and strawberry guava that may be growing near fruit orchards. Due to the seasonality of many of Hawaii fruit crops, the medfly can sustain itself year-round in fallen fruit. Practicing sanitation is essential to stop the fruit fly reproductive cycle. The second step in Mediterranean fruit fly suppression is protein bait sprays. Protein baits attract and kill feeding male and female fruit flies. Protein bait sprays should begin soon after the flowering stage as fruits are beginning to form. Weekly sprays are recommended until the final harvest and reapplications are required after rain. Protein baits are sprayed to the underside of fruit tree leaves or on tree trunks. Protein baits should be applied in two to three spot sprays per tree. Because protein baits target female fruit flies, proper bait spray application results in decreased infestation. Trapping is the third and final step in Mediterranean fruit fly suppression. Biolure medfly traps come with three different attractants that work together to attract both male and female Mediterranean fruit flies. A sticky card is placed inside the trap to contain the trapped flies. One Biolure medfly trap is required for every five host trees and are most effective when hung from the branches at eye level. The attractants need to be replaced every two to two and a half months, while the sticky card should be replaced as needed. Medfly control can be achieved using sanitation, protein baits, and trapping. Many fruit tree growers have reduced losses by incorporating these three tactics into their regular farming practice. Find out more about preparing protein bait later in this video. More information is also available on our website at www.fruitfly.hawaii.edu. Of the four major fruit flies, the Malaysian fruit fly is the least common species. Found at sea level to elevations of 1,000 feet, this fly is distinguished from the other flies by its wings. These flies have wings that are clear, except for a dark spot at the tip. Malaysian fruit flies are primarily associated with patches of wild and cultivated crops such as chili pepper, pepper, tomato, eggplant, poha, and cucumber. Also known as the solanaceous fruit fly, it is not known to be a major agricultural pest. It is easy to control using the two tactics of field sanitation and protein bait sprays. Effective field sanitation keeps Malaysian fruit fly populations low. Bagging leftover host fruit and vegetables or feeding coals to animals helps stop the fruit fly from completing its life cycle. Protein baits target feeding male and female fruit flies. Protein bait sprays are intended for female fruit fly control to reduce infestation levels. Prepared protein bait should be applied to the underside of host plant leaves. Two to three spot sprays per plant, or for every 10 feet of host crop, is sufficient for Malaysian fruit fly control. Weekly sprays are recommended until fruit fly damage is no longer detected. These flies are quickly controlled with sanitation and protein bait applications. More information is available on our website 
at www.fruitfly.hawaii.edu. If the infested fruit is properly removed, the hundreds of eggs inside do not have a chance to develop. Proper sanitation is the process of disposing of infested fruit to stop the fruit fly life cycle. Sanitation is essential to fruit fly suppression because each fruit is capable of hosting hundreds of fruit fly eggs. If all the eggs survive, fruit fly populations can increase very rapidly. Pesticides sprayed on the fruit do not penetrate to kill the protected eggs and larvae inside. Sanitation practices prevent future population of fruit flies by destroying the infested fruit and the eggs and larvae inside before they emerge to pupate in the soil. There are many ways to remove fruit from the planting area. Backyard gardeners may use their kitchen's garbage disposal, while farmers may till under certain crops. Placing damaged roots inside a covered compost heap or utilizing it as an animal feed are good methods of disposal. Submersing the fruit for at least 48 hours or burying the fruit at least 18 inches deep are also acceptable. Some growers bag their infested calls, but it is important to remember to seal the bags tightly. Finally, a tent-like screen structure, called an augmentorium, can be used to place damaged fruits inside. The screen sides retain the emergent fruit flies while allowing the smaller fruit fly enemies, called parasitoids, to re-enter the farm environment. Fruit flies require sugar and protein to survive and mature. Due to this inherent need, fruit flies are attracted to high quality protein and sugar baits. Protein baits attract feeding male and female fruit flies. The two protein baits commercially available in Hawaii, Nulor, which requires the addition of a registered pesticide, and GF120 fruit fly bait concentrate, which includes the insecticide, spinosad. Both protein baits are not restricted use chemicals. GF120 NF is listed for use in organic production. Take some time to read the instructions on the label before preparing your protein bait solution. GF120 NF fruit fly bait concentrate is mixed with water, one part GF120 to 4 to 10 parts water. Approximately one fourth to one ounce of spray solution is required for each tree. Apply the same volume of spray solution to 10 feet of border crop in several spray spots. Weekly spray applications commence after the flowering stage as fruits begin to form. Regular protein bait applications should continue until the last harvest or six to eight weeks after the final harvest if the field is replanted. Spray protein bait on fruiting hosts when targeting Oriental, Mediterranean, or Malaysian fruit fly and spray within bordering roosting hosts when controlling melon fly. Spray the underside of leaves or on tree trunks. Do not spray fruit. Adjust the amount of spray solution according to the severity of infestation and amount of foliage. The diluted solution should not be stored for future applications as the mixture breaks down quickly. Sprayers should be washed thoroughly after each use to prevent clogging. Growers in very humid or rainy areas that require multiple GF120 reapplications have the option of making protein bait umbrellas. GF120 umbrellas cut down on the number of reapplications, but still need to be monitored and refreshed weekly. Inverted cups or bottles are used to house sponges saturated with a thick mixture of one part GF120 to four parts water and hung in areas where the protein bait would normally be sprayed. Make protein bait application part of your regular farming practices along with sanitation and trapping, and fruit flies will no longer be a problem. Homemade oriental and melon fly traps are easy to make. 
The materials needed are as follows. Empty clear plastic bottles with the caps removed, razor blade or scissors, drill and 1 8 inch or 1 16 inch drill bit, latex or nitrile gloves or a plastic bag, gauze or gauze-like fabric or pantyhose, twist ties, 16 gauge galvanized wire, and fruit fly lure plugs. A methyl eugenol plug is needed to make an oriental fruit fly trap, while a Q-lure plug is required for a melon fly trap. Start by carefully cutting the bottle in two, crosswise, using a razor blade or scissors, about one fourth inch below the shoulder so that the cut ends are the same diameter. Drill a 1 8 or 1 16 inch hole through the center of the bottle's bottom half. Use latex or nitro gloves or a small plastic bag to protect your hands from touching the fruit fly lure plug. Wrap the lure with a one layer of gauze around the lure and secure it with a twist tie. Use only one lure plug per trap. Attach the prepared fruit fly lure plug at one end of 12 inches of galvanized wire. Insert the wire through the drilled hole so that the lure hangs inside the halved bottle. The wire sticking out of the bottle is used for hanging the trap. Insert the bottle's top half into its bottom half so that the mouth faces upward. Make sure the lure does not obstruct the bottle opening. Hang the trap in a semi-shaded area according to the fruit fly species you are targeting. Oriental and Biolure medfly traps should be placed within their plant hosts, while melon fly traps should be placed in roosting hosts. Traps should be monitored regularly to ensure that they are still effective. Trapped flies that have died should be removed and the trap rehung as needed. Methyl eugenol plugs inside oriental fruit fly traps need to be replaced every three to four months. Q lure plugs inside melon fly traps need to be replaced at least every six months. Fruit fly trapping is an important component in fruit fly suppression and should be practiced with sanitation and protein bait applications for comprehensive fruit fly control. For over a century, fruit flies have devastated local growers and backyard gardeners. Research has shown that utilizing the fruit fly control program of sanitation, protein bait sprays, and trapping are effective tactics in controlling fruit fly populations. Backyard gardeners can once again enjoy homegrown fruits and vegetables, and farmers are harvesting increased yields of high-quality produce and gaining local market share and export opportunities. For more information about this program, please visit our website at www.fruitfly.hawaii.edu. Contact your local county extension office for additional information on fruit fly suppression. Hawaii County Extension offices are located in Kamuela, Hilo and Kona, the Kauai County Extension office in Lihue, Maui County Extension office in Kahului, and Ho'olehuan Molokai, and the Oahu County Extension offices in Honolulu, Kaneohe, and Wahiawa.